Welcome to the workroom. We are going to go through all of the steps of making a sheer drapery. And I've broken down the steps into 13 categories. I'll touch on each category and, and some of them more um, in detail than others, just for time purposes. And if you'd like any more explanation on any of these steps, please comment below and I'll work on the details in that step in a future video. I'll try to answer any questions that you have in the meantime, if you want to put a question in there. But anyway, here's the 13 steps. Number one, measure twice, cut once, and we're going to pull a thread for straight cuts since it's a shear. Number two, we're going to serge the buckram and we're going to railroad the fabric and we're going to start on top, not on the bottom. Number three, we're going to calculate pleats and spaces but the math on that is going to be saved for a future video. And then number four, we're going to turn and press the header and mark those pleats and spaces. Number five, we're going to table the sheer drapery to length on the table. Number seven, blind stitch side hems and bottom hem. Number eight, hand stitch the corners. Number nine, fan fold. Number 10, we're going to stitch the pleats, and I did that on my walking foot sewing machine. Number 11, we're going to pinch the two finger pleats and then clip those into place. And then we're going to, number 12, we're going to tack the pleats. You can do it by hand or machine. I mean, in the video, I'll be using my walking foot machine. And last step, number 13, we're going to pin the drapery with the drapery hooks. And that will be the very last step. Here's my work order that we'll look at. It's a lot to cover, but it's, it's pretty much everything from A to Z, and I hope you enjoy. I'm ready to cut this sheer fabric and I have my mark with the two pins right here. The reason I marked it with two pins is because I had to measure, it's a really long piece, I had to measure it in sections and the two pins means that's my final cutting mark, not just the midpoint. So that's what, how I know it's safe to cut here. I don't wanna cut at the midway because that would be too short. So now I just put a little snip right there and if you pull it apart a little bit one or two or three threads will come loose and then find one of the thicker ones and start pulling on it that one created a loop and um, just try to work it through gently some of them will tend to break if you pull too tight and too fast but if you hang on to this end real good and then gently work this fabric through the thread it will go farther. So now that it broke, I'm gonna cut as far as I can see where I've pulled that thread. And it's hard to tell with this white fabric against the gridded table, but um, you can definitely see, it looks like a run in your pantyhose where that thread has come out. So I'm gonna cut right there. I probably could just follow the grain on this fabric since it has uh, such a distinctive horizontal and vertical line, but uh, I think my eyes would go batty after, after a while. So this is just a way to be sure that you're getting a true straight cut. And so you see I can see that I'm caught up to where I was pulling. And if I wanted to grab that thread again, there it is. 
I can keep pulling that same thread. Let's see how far I can get without it breaking this time. I already went through and marked the whole bolt to make sure I have all the yardage that I need before making this first cut. Actually, this is my second cut, but um, you want to measure all the fabric, check for flaws, make sure you have what you need before you start cutting. This is going to be two pairs of sheer drapery. So I need four cuts. And we are railroading this fabric. The finish length is only 102. So we have enough by railroading the 118 inch fabric for hems and header, which is awesome because then there's no seams in the shear. Okay, done. And I'm gonna mark the right side on the corner with a pin. This pin means this is the right side and we're gonna be railroading. So I'm gonna make this also the top and this is where the buckram will go along the selvage. So actually I'll be putting the buckram on this side, which is the back. You wanna always have the same habit of marking, which is your front. Could be a piece of tape, could be a clip. Um, this is just my preferred method. to change the th serger threads again. Just gonna tie the new thread to the old thread and pull the threads through the serger instead of re-threading each one. Okay, ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna take some uh, buckram four inch Four inch sew on buckram. There's no adhesive on this one, um, and I like the uh, stiffness of it, which is why I'm using it in this case on this white shear. I'm gonna put the buckram down on the bottom and the shear on top. And how I know this is the right side is my little corner that's flipped to the face. That's just my way of marking the face fabric, and it's the top. And we're railroading this fabric, so I'm going to be cutting off the selvage as I go. Um, so by uh, running the buckram along the selvage line, that means I'm railroading this fabric. This is 250 inches of fabric. Um, it's going to be two finger pinch pleat. And there's uh, two pairs, so I have four of these to do. And I'm going to, I can see through this. So as I'm going, I'm going to line up the top of the buckram with that bottom line of the selvage so that the actual selvage gets cut off. And I have the uh, sheer fabric on top with the buckram um, on the table first. And that way I have the right amount of tension. Um, if I was doing this the other way with the buckram on top, then the buckram would push and it would gather the sheer underneath. And it would just be a really gathered, um, wrinkly, puckery sheer underneath and it would uh, not make pretty pleats or hang very well. So and I'm trying not to cut any of the buckram with the serger blade. Pretty sure it's not good for your blades.
um, press the buckram uh, turned once, and then I'm going to turn it a second time for a double turned header. So first I'm going to press it with one turn all the way down and then with a second on the way back. I like to uh, pin it to the table. to get all of the slack out. And I like to get that buckram all the way up to this first edge. Um, so I put a few pins in, in the table to hold it there before I crease it with the iron. Press along this folded edge. I'm just running my fingers along the fabric to really ensure that that buckram is all the way to that crease. I have it pinned all the way at the other end so that I can pull all the slack out. And I'm following the line on the table. I don't want to spend too much time in any one spot with the iron, especially as I'm steaming because I don't want the shear to shrink. Now I can move it down, um, move this half off the table and get the second half up and do the same thing. I'm gonna start pinning the header of this shear panel um, before I move it. I'm gonna mark where the pleats and the spaces go. Um, I already did the math and I'll show you on the whiteboard in another video. I have my math worked out on my work order. The returns and the overlaps are each going to be four inches. So either side, there's going to be 23 pleats at six and a half inches each and 22 spaces at three and three quarters each. I'm going to mark um, three inches first at the end because I haven't tabled it yet. So I want to leave enough for a side hem. And I'm going to leave three and a half inches just so I have a little play. So that's three and a half, and then four will be the return. And then first, after the return, will be a pleat, six and a half, and then three and three quarters for a space. Then I'll just alternate six and a half, three and three quarters. It's gonna be a two finger pinch pleat. I'm gonna also put a pin at every space at the bottom. And then when I push the pins in, I'm burying the tips so that as I'm working on it, um, I, two things, don't poke myself. We don't wanna bleed on the fabric. And also so I don't snag the sheer fabric. have the header pinned and ready for spaces and pleats. Uh, it's ready to table on this half. Uh, I just have to slide the whole thing down and do the same to the other half. Now I can continue marking spaces and pleats, and I left off on a space, so the next part is a pleat. So here we have, this is the um, side hem, 
overlap and then the pleat. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, so I definitely have enough fabric, enough pleats, enough spaces, return, overlap, side hem, side hem. So I just have to um, turn the pins and then I can hang this one up and do the other three, or I could continue and table this one all the way through, but I think I want to um, get all four panels to the same point before I start tabling. So um, I'll just turn these pins and continue with the next one. tabling a panel. I have a sheer drapery here that's going to be 102 inches long. This piece of fabric is 118 inches wide by 280 inches. And I'm going to set my length 102 up here. And that's where the top of the drape is going to be. I'm going to start from the top down instead of usually we start from the bottom up. But whenever I do a shear, I like to start from the top down. And so before I get too far, I'm just going to make sure everything is um, smooth and square, um, starting with the top and then this side over here. So if the top is um, laying on a line that's straight and square and the side edge, which I know is straight and square, the table is straight and square and the fabric, this cut line is straight and square because I pulled a thread. So we know that that's a good line. By getting those two lines worked out so they're laying nice and even with the lines, then we can work out all the rest of the fabric. These little ripples here, we wanna work those out. And so since this is 280 inches of fabric, I'll have to do this about five times to get the whole thing tabled to length. The purpose of this is to get the bottom hem put into place so that the drapery is super even uh, when it's hanging. The hemline will be super even on the floor. Hi again just want to take a minute after you watched step number five and six where we tabled the sheer drapery to length and we turned the hem long ways on the table and double folded that bottom hem it's a lot to cover when tabling so we're gonna save a lot of those extra details and really like dive deep in another video so be watching for that and if you like this video so far please subscribe and like it if you want to see more videos about drapery making or anything else involving fabric and sewing. And also we will be having a Patreon channel coming up. We're working on that really hard. So watch for a launch date for some special videos coming up. 
And now we'll get back to steps and we're on to step number seven. Thank you. About to start blind stitching the side hem of this white sheer drapery. I want to get the stitch set for tension before I get too far. So I'm just going to sew a little bit and see how it looks. And right away, um, it's not grabbing and it's too tight. So because it's not grabbing, that means I need more bite. So I'm going to turn this knob in the direction that says more and then it's too tight so I'm gonna loosen this so like righty tighty lefty loosey I want to loosen it so that the stitch is not so tight So since I'm happy with that, I'm going to take this out, but I want to remind you where we started, how, how it looked and the adjustments I made. So here's how it looked in the beginning. It's just really too, way too tight and it's pulling. So it's making this um, side hem, it's shrinking it up because it's pulling it so much. So that was this setting. That was too tight, so we loosened that a whole bunch. And then that got better, but it was not grabbing enough of the fabric here. So we went more, more, more. We kept going more, more, more because it still wasn't grabbing. Started grabbing more, but not all the way. So kept turning more, more, more. See, it still had a big gap. Turn more, more, more. And now it's starting to get more consistently grabbing. A little bit of a pocket right there, but still less than before. So I did a tiny bit more of adjustment, and now there's hardly any gaps. So I'm happy with this. Um, I might still play with this a little bit because it could be a tiny bit tighter, but I don't want to tighten this too much to where it would gather up the side hem which would make it shorter at the bottom. Okay, so I got the side hem finished on this sheer drapery. Got the pins all taken out. I'm happy with the stitch. Now I'm gonna turn this panel sideways and then put in the hem on the bottom hem <clears throat> and hopefully the stitch is set accurately for this direction sometimes it needs a little adjusting let's see how it looks I'm gonna fan fold this panel. <clears throat> but first I'm gonna press the side hems and the bottom hem. I just finished the blind hemming on all the side hems and bottom hem. And before I fold it, I like to press it for a really nice finishing touch. Okay, I'm gonna start my fan folding by measuring at the top. I'm going to line up my first two pins, which are, um, I have the return uh, measured over here. 
at four inches. And then the first pleat is six and a half, six and three quarter inches. And so by folding it in half and lining up those first two pins, <clears throat> I can measure from the end of the return to the fold of the pleat and I'm at seven and a half inches. So I want to measure that same amount down here, seven and a half. I'm going to put my thumb right at that seven and a half inch mark, fold it under, and then check that distance all the way down.
now that these um, pleats are all pleated and tacked and pretty much finished the last step of finishing up a drapery is to add the drapery hooks and these are going to go on rings we want the top of the hook to be a half an inch from the top of the drapery so from the top of the drapery up here to the top of the hook here we want that to be a half an inch so that means that the place where you start pinning the hook will be one and seven eighths down from the top of the drapery. So I'll just use this handy little ruler to find one and seven eighths. And right here tells me uh, that's where I need to insert the pointy part of the hook. And I want to try to make sure that I get it, um, get that hook to go in between the stitching of the pleat. And then I want to make sure that I don't see any of the silver coming through either side from the front. We don't want to see that. If it shows, then take it out as far as you need to uh, redo it. Sometimes all the way out and then reinsert. And then it's uh, going to probably be more hidden for you. Thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. Um, I really hope you learned something and please subscribe to this channel if it was really helpful. And if you want to see more videos um, about any of these other topics in detail. And also we'll be working on that Patreon channel. So also watch for a launch date for that if you're interested. And please leave comments if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. Thank you again. See you next time.